Hello, first of all, my name is Andras Lurins. Um, basically, I'm from Hungary and uh, by profession, I'm a political scientist and an international relations expert. Um, what determines me basically is, is the organization or network of organizations that, that we created in uh, some of the countries in Europe and also outside of Europe. We're, with our organizations, uh, we are trying to focus on, on uh, education, on Basically, we are trying to focus on international relations and cultural relations to educational activities, uh, including non-formal activities and, and formal ones, such as big-scale, large-scale conferences and uh, roundtable discussions and the many, many projects that are supported, for example, by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Commission or, or the Visegrad grant supported by International Visegrad Fund. Uh, we are based in Hungary. Our flagship organization is the Institute for Cultural Relations Policy, uh, but we also have um, um, sister organizations in Georgia, in Tbilisi, in Finland, in ESPO, uh, also in Ukraine, in Kiev, in Turkey as well, and then recently in Mali, in Africa. And uh, during the lockdown, we established our first vir virtual office in, in India, so we try to carry out um, our activities in, in many different parts of the world, targeting young people and uh, basically anyone or every, everyone who is interested in uh, international relations and especially of uh, cultural relations. Um, so Visegrad grant uh, is uh, something that's funded by the Visegrad Fund, the International Visegrad Fund, which is an initiative of four countries, Poland, Slovakia, the Czech Republic and Hungary. And these uh, four governments have decided uh, in the beginning of the 90s to, to cooperate and to foster together the EU ex their uh, EU accession uh, policies. Um, one of the the greatest benefit of this uh, of this cooperation and, and uh, the greatest manifestation of this cooperation is the is the Visegrad Fund. Through this fund, uh, these uh, four countries um, are supporting uh, educational projects, uh, artistic projects, uh, uh, cross-border cooperation projects, and basically um, any any innovative ideas that that can pursue. Uh, ideas in, in science, in education, um, and, and many other fields as well. Um, basically, Visegrad uh, grant has two main uh, bands, uh, or two types of Visegrad grants. Uh, the first is the individual support. So they support, uh, they can support any individual living in these four countries that I mentioned. And these are the mobilities of, of these individuals. And the second band, the second types of, of um, uh, projects or um, activities that can be uh, supported is through the projects, it's for organizations. Um, within the organizational support or, or within those uh, types, uh, there are three subtypes uh, of, of um, grants. Um, there is the Visegrad grant and there is another one for uh, countries outside of these four countries, it's called Visegrad Plus grant, and also there are strategic grants. Um, if you prefer, or if, if you would like, I, I, I can also tell um, a little bit more about these. Yes, so basically, um, I, I think there, there will be some individuals watching this uh, video, I, I hope not just uh, representative of organizations, so for them it can be uh, interesting if they are checked the website. Uh, the website is uh, visegradfund.org or uh, visegrad.fund. Um, and then they can find uh, the opportunities for themselves and for also for, for organizations. For individuals, as I mentioned, there are uh, mobilities. The International Visegrad Fund is, is looking for um, individuals pursuing innovative ideas in uh, science and education, um, as well as artists and artist groups who are wishing to engage in, in, in a conversation on contemporary art, for example, in Visegrad region. Um, there are four types of mobilities that can be supported. First of all, academic mobility. So basically, to Visegrad grant, uh, an individual can apply for support for bachelor, master's, also post-master studies, also research activities. 
basically in all disciplines and in any language. Um, the rule is that up to four semester and uh, there are almost 200 higher education institutions that are available across Central and Eastern Europe where um, these placements can be done. So apart from uh, academic mobility, um, the second type of mobility is, is visual and sound art. Um, they, Visegrad uh, found the facilit uh, facilitate exchanges of uh, artists coming from the Visegrad countries, also cultural professionals in the fields of visual and sound art, including design, music, video and film, also new media and, and mixed media. Then the third type is the performing arts. So also IVF is supporting uh, contemporary theater, dance uh, in, in Central Europe by providing uh, them opportunities and to, to host artists and, and companies from these four countries. And the last type of mobility is uh, in uh, literature and journalism. Um, through Visegrad grant, uh, um, it can be developed to promote uh, the literature of Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic and Hungary by providing mobility opportunities for, for talented uh, writers and, and journalists. So basically these are the um, individual mobilities. There are many, many calls, many, many sub calls. I don't even try to, to list them or, or, uh, or uh, make an attempt to, um, to, to list them because uh, they vary year by year. So the best uh, option is, is to check the website, which I, I, I highly suggest. And there are calls um, posted there um basically i, I think on a, on a bi-monthly or or maybe like a six month basis so um there is a big variety of opportunities for individuals there but uh, as i mentioned these mainly four types of mobilities that are available for individuals uh -huh. um basically i would say that there are three things that make a uh, visegrad grant a little bit different to to, to those ones that, that are, are available in the region. Uh, first of all, uh, that there should be um, a Visegrad scope or, or, or a Visegrad uh, feature of the project. So when someone is writing a project or someone, is, someone has an idea uh, to, to, to implement in, uh, within Visegrad project, it has to be something that is reflecting on a challenge or, or, uh, or that is um, prevailing in, in these four countries. Or it has to be something that are addressing a problem or an issue or solving a local issue even. That is also something that is uh, reflecting the, the common features of the Visegrad countries. So the project has to focus on, on these four countries. This is, this is the first and most important. Also participants mostly coming from, uh, uh, from these four countries especially. Uh, also when another country is involved within Visegrad Plus grant, of course there is a, 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 um, an objective of the project that uh, the Visegrad Fund itself and the Visegrad culture, let's say, has to be somehow promoted of course outside of the Visegrad countries so so this is one of the one of the, the features the second one is um is the topics that um that uh, can be addressed to to Visegrad fund and those are uh, there are seven um, large um range of uh, seven diverse range seven um um, activities, types of activities that can be uh, addressed. Uh, those are the culture and common identity. So basically IVF is supporting projects that are strengthening the, the regional identity, the Visegrad identity, of course the European identity, uh, through the common and, and cultural um, initiatives. And then the second is, is the education and capacity building. So in, in this way uh, the projects, those projects try to, to, to raise the, the competitiveness um, of, of the region, of the Central European region uh, to the uh, improved skills of, of uh, the citizens. Then the third type is the innovation, uh, research development and entrepreneurship. So uh, of course uh, they are supporting projects that are aiming the innovation and join and 
joint uh, research and development projects and also the advancement of the regional cohesion in the economic development lesson. Then the fourth type is the democratic values and the media. So they are also focusing on, on, on projects that are advancing democratic values, support human rights, minorities, or contribute to the development of the civil society, strengthening media freedom, and so on. Actually, these are the projects that we do because we are mostly focusing on human rights and also um, ethnic minorities. <clears throat> then and the um, I don't know how many, fifth type, yes, is the, is the um, public policy and the institutional partnership. So it's about uh, contributing to good governance and to improve the effectiveness of, of uh, public policy making. Then the sixth is the regional development, environment and tourism. So they can also support projects that advance uh, strategies for environmentally sustainable uh, regional development and tourism. <coughs> And then the last one is, is uh, the, the seventh one is the social development and also they are focusing on the supporting projects that are strengthening the uh, inclusive society and of course the, the solidarity in the region. So basically this is the second thing that uh, somehow differentiates uh, Visegrad grant projects from, from the rest and uh, the third one is um, um, the priorities of course. Uh, because um, year by year there are many, there are priorities that are announced by the uh, International Visegrad Fund. Those can be found on on the website, and of course, again, those are addressing local or let's say regional uh, challenges. And the last and the third uh, feature that dif differentiates is the is the regional um, scape of of the Visegrad projects, as I mentioned. Uh, four countries are involved mostly and also in some cases there are one more or maximum two or three other countries are involved. If I, if I would promote it, uh, I would say it's a good opportunity for organizations who are doing the various uh, activities because through Visegrad grants um, and maybe this could be also the fourth uh, aspect uh, <laughs> to, to the answer of, of the previous question, is that through Visegrad grant, basically any kind of activity can be done. So it, it, if it has a Visegrad feature, of course, but uh, it's not limited only, only to conferences or summer schools or trainings or youth exchanges or seminars or partnership building activities and so on. So it, it's many more apart from that. And even individual mobilities can be included here. Even uh, partnerships of universities can, can be uh, understood here. So, so there is a big uh, variety even even if we see the uh, eligible um, eligible organizations uh, for for participating and, and for applying, we can see that there is also a big variety of, of different types of organizations. One of the rules of, of Visegrad grant is um, that uh, at least three countries of the four has to be involved. This is the rule. And also there's a recommendation that all four countries like Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Hungary should be included in, in the project. Um, in case of strategic grant, all four countries has to be involved. In case of Visegrad plus grants, it, it has to be three countries from the Visegrad group plus one country from, from the Balkan, from the Western Balkans region or from the Eastern uh, partnership um, region. Um, yeah, well, Poland, <laughs> uh, given the fact that, that uh, there are uh, plenty of Polish organizations that are uh, doing quite well in, in international cooperation and in, in educational projects, it means that um, there is a very high chance to, to have uh, Polish participants and Polish partners included in, in the projects, of course. Um, if I think back uh, to our uh, projects uh, in both of the Visegrad uh, projects we in involve Polish organizations, but um, apart from Visegrad, we, we like uh, actually to cooperate with um, Polish organizations because of many reasons. Because of, uh, I, I think and I believe that there is a cultural proximity between uh, Poland and, and Hungary, and uh, also I believe um, that we can we have something like similar mindset, let's say, when when it's about when it comes about. Uh, implementation of projects. 
Also, I have to mention that uh, especially in larger scale projects, we include Poland because uh, of its geogra geographic proximity to, to Hungary as well. That's, that's also uh, another aspect. And um, my opinion about uh, Polish partners is very positive so far. Uh, we didn't uh, only cooperate with one or two, but, but uh, I think of countless of, of Polish organizations so far from, from different regions of Poland and from different cities of Poland. And um, this cooperation is also reach out different aspects, such as sending from sending participants to writing projects and sharing ideas with us, and also to co-create co or collaborating on, on various um, scientific outputs even. So there's a big variety of, of uh, fields or, or many fields that we are cooperating with Polish organizations. And uh, actually, one of no the the best project experience that ever happened me, with me was was in Poland. Actually, it was in uh, Kielce, and also we went to uh, some other um, villages near Kielce. It was really great um, because I, I got to know uh, other um, project managers, other representatives of, of organizations that are active in in the same field, and also focusing on youth. And um, it was kind of partnership building activity, and, and we, we came together, uh, we, we created a great atmosphere. And since then, I think it was three or four years ago already, four years ago. And since then, I have many um, partners from, from that project. And, and since then, uh, I, I still have many friends whom we, I'm, I'm in touch with like, like every week uh, since then. Uh, so it, it was a great one. And, um, I, I think we, we could create that, that great atmosphere because of, of course, uh, uh, the, the organizer, the organizer team, it was, it was a Polish one, of course, it was a Polish uh, team that made this uh, project available and invited us and, and to make a really pleasant uh, stay for, for us in, in Poland. So, yes, it, it, I have very good memories about Poland. Um, I liked uh, especially the uh, the task when we had to, to do something together. For example, we, we did, uh, we, we built a boat, an actual real, real boat that like six of us could fit in and, and we were uh, uh, sailing on, on a lake near Kielce, so it, it was really nice. But apart from that, also we had um, the chance to have some free time activities also in, in Kielce, yeah. so it was, it was really nice to, to, to get to know a place uh, on your own and not just to follow the leader or the guide or something. So it, it was also good. And after the project, I had the chance to stay a couple of more days in, in Krakow and it was really great again, because I, I had uh, some nice uh, days there with the, the new the friends who, who newly became my, my friends, of course. And um, I have to mention about the food, Polish food is something that is really close to my taste. So I, I really liked it as, as, as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, the, what, what I, I would like also to, to emphasize here, and maybe it's something that, that we, we normally don't, don't think about, but I think it's um, um, the hospitality and the understanding, the way of understanding of, of Polish people, that how they understand other people and how they understand Hungarians especially. So I think there might be a secret or a hidden or an invisible bond between us, because I think we can understand each other very well and very quickly. There are basically two types of projects. One of them, uh, or one type is, is uh, open for anyone. Um, basically, these are the projects that we are organizing. So how we do it, we make an open call and anyone from, uh, um, from the, the eligible countries, which are mostly the Visegrad countries, can apply for, for such projects. Um, the other type of projects is, is for those uh, who are already in a, let's say, a closed circle and uh, they invite participants. Uh, those are not available, of course, for, for everyone. Mm, th these are mainly smaller scale projects, uh, research projects, or, or, or um, targeting um, a very, very narrow um, target group, or, or they invite specific people and experts to, to, um, to take part in the project. But if you are talking about a little bit larger projects, 
um, trainings, seminars, summer schools, um, debates, discussion forums, conferences, and there is a, again a big variety of of activities that can be found uh, funded by by the Visegrad grants. Then, in those cases, of course, uh, basically anyone can be um, participants who, of course, meet the the requirements. In some cases, uh, the the organizing uh, uh, institutions uh, um, create some require uh, list of requirements, such as knowing of of English or knowing of of a language, for instance. Uh, yeah, such requirement can be. Um, uh, um, age limits. Most of the trainings, what we do is for, for young people. Um, our target group is, uh, is people with many social science background and between, um, let's say, 18 and, and 30. So this is our main target group. Um, I know that there are many organizations um, do similar activities like us and they also have similar requirements. Um, but um, of course, um, there are plenty of opportunities that can be found for, for even younger people, even older people, or e even those who have a different uh, interest than social sciences. Um, just um, something that I, I, I would like to add here uh, uh, is, is, the, is the application or, or the how to find these, these opportunities. I think that could be the most difficult one. In your question, you mentioned or, or you, uh, you indicated that there could be some link between the individual or between those who are interested in taking part in the programs and the organizations. And I would also suggest that. I would, I would also suggest to, to anyone basically who is interested in, in international mobilities or want to take part in, in projects, not just one project, but having in mind that they want to to go on for, for uh, international mobilities uh, for a longer period. For them, I, I would suggest to, to contact or get in touch with an, with an organization that is focusing on, on such things, on international mobilities, on, on um, uh, being part and also to organize uh, education or organizing educational activities. So with it, um, you can, or they, they can already get into internal databases, let's say, and they can be <laughs> within the reach or, or they can be uh, the ones who can be called for, for later projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, um, this is a general thing. I, I mean, this is how I see our partners are doing and how they are recruiting the, the participants for our projects. Lot of benefits, um, and <laughs> maybe I can, if you don't mind, I will start from my own perspective and from my own experience. Uh, I, I, I think I, I took part in my first uh, exchange program like six or seven years ago, and um, I, I immediately thought that it has a lot of benefits. And uh, among those, I, I could find that, that I can practice language. I can practice my English language or, or other languages, of course. Uh, in case of Visegrad countries, of course, um, there are citizens uh, coming from these countries. But of course, among the citizens can be those uh, can can be ethnic minorities as well, who also bring their culture. So, I, of course, uh, if I take part in, in such projects, I can I can have some insights of other culture, other different cultures, not just from Central Europe, but also people who are who have different backgrounds but living in Central Europe as well. So apart from um, the language or practicing language and apart from, from cultural exchange, uh, the topic itself is very important. So there are a big variety of um, projects that are targeting uh, different topics. Um, again, I can mention ours. Uh, we already did uh, organize, we already organized two projects with the fund of uh, Visegrad grants. One of them was targeting journalists and uh, in, in a short training, in a three days, uh, very short um, uh, training course, we tried to, uh, to, to, to teach the participants how to write articles and, and blog entries. So we were targeting young journalists and uh, we tried to transfer um, journal knowledge about journalism, about fake news, about uh, opinion articles and so on. 
um, recently, just uh, two months ago, we had uh, our, our uh, we started our next uh, second um, Visegrad uh, funded uh, training, mm -hmm. and this one is um, is about human rights. So again, uh, I, I I can say that the the the, the topics are, are various. So, but what they have in common that if someone is taking part uh, in such a programs or projects, of course they will have the chance to to get information and get some insights about the topic from uh, experts and also from uh, from their peers from from the other um, participants. Mm 